From McKinsey to Pepsi, to wreck it and now Starbucks, Lakshman Narsimhan has seen a steaming rise to the top of an iconic American brand. Stepping into the shoes of the legendary Howard Schultz is daunting, but Narsimhan is taking each day cup by cup and store by store. Almost a year in, he's stirring up his strategy to make Starbucks even more global, doubling down on digitization and ensuring that the iconic coffee chain becomes much more of a lifestyle brand. Welcome to the Global Dialogue. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're at a Starbucks cafe in Pune. If you're wondering why you're here, well, the suspense is now being broken because we are joined by the global CEO of Starbucks, Lakshman Narsimhan. Puna boy. Uh, Lakshman, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. And uh, this is really a special homecoming for you, isn't it? Oh, it is, actually. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for coming to my hometown. Thank you for coming to my home store. The Corrigan Park store is about 500 meters from where my mother taught mm. as a primary school teacher. And it's less than a kilometer from where I grew up. And so I've walked the street so many times, um, you know, as pretty much a nobody. And then you're coming here and, you know, it's amazing to see my hometown, my hometown partners, meet hometown customers. And it's glad, I'm so glad you are able to come to our no, I mean, I, I've been enjoying watching you behind the counter playing a barista, so, I, and you're not bad at it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I mean, I actually earned my green apron, um, you know, when I started they training. They didn't give it to you? No, they didn't. They actually made it work. You know, so I had a trainer. She was, she was pretty tough. She would say, hey, there's too much foam in this latte. Go make it again. I got a bit of feedback today, too, by the way, as uh, you probably saw. But, um, but it's actually really good to, uh, to know exactly how we do our things. Uh, so for six months I trained. Um, I trained in all the various aspects of the coffee business. I got a green apron, which is the first step. And uh, two weeks ago I got a black apron mm. because we've been working on knowledge all the way through. I've been working in stores half a day a month because our life is in these stores. It's with these partners. It's why I work. Mm. And so it's important to keep that going and to stay really connected to the team at the front line. You know, I want to understand from you, you've been doing this immersion exercise uh, now for the past eight months that you've been at Starbucks, but how do you cope with the baggage of expectations? How do you cope with the inevitable comparisons? You're at an American iconic institution, Starbucks, and you replace an iconic global CEO, Howard Schultz. How do you deal with that? Well, the first thing you've got to appreciate and acknowledge is the fact that Howard is iconic, the fact that he's a tremendous entrepreneur. Um, and he's redefined the way the world drinks coffee, and you've got to pay respect to it. Coming of Asian origin, that's actually easy to do. Mm. You know, when I was uh, first interviewed about this immersion program, and you know, a journalist asked me, you know, how could you agree to a six-month immersion? I looked at her and I said, you know, it's really interesting the way you word that question. Is it how could you do this immersion program for six months, um, or why was this immersion six months long? I said, if you were Asian, you might have asked the question differently. You would have mm. said, why was this immersion program only six months long? Mm. There's one simple word that changes, in fact, the perspective that you have around why you do this. I learned a lot from Howard. Um, but you also appreciate that I'm different. And um, if you start looking at the complementary skills that I bring, mm. that's what I'm going to bring to the brand. I deeply appreciate the brand. I know what it stands for. And it stands for human connection. It stands for ensuring that people have a place where they can belong, where mm. they can bring joy, uh, where the craft of coffee gives customers the results that they want. And we have the courage to keep innovating in the business. Those are our fundamental values. So as we were doing this, Howard and I had a long conversation about mm. the company. And we said, you know what? We've built this company. It's now 51 years old. We think the headroom for this company is really quite large. It's time for us to re-found this company. Mm, mm. And that's what my leadership team and I have done over the last year. We have re-founded the company. Mm. You go back to the mission of the company. The mission of the company and how it had was a mission of, you know, uh, um, inspire and nurture the human spirit, one cup, one person, one neighborhood at a time. Tremendous mission. But it was written before the iPhone. Mm. And as you look at what's going on with the way customers are evolving, 
my leadership team and I, we worked with thousands of partners around the world, and we wanted to do something that gave the power of this cup mm. to the barista. Because really, that's where it happens. And so our mission celebrates the past and evolves the company to the future. And it is this, with every cup, with every conversation, with every community, we nurture the limitless possibilities of human connection. So the barista, when they hand the cup, they're having mm. a conversation with you, either physically or we do it digitally. Mm. Mm. The community is beyond just the neighborhood. What we're doing is we're essentially uncovering what the limitless possibilities are of us connecting mm. with each other. So the mission itself is different. You know, you're talking about limitless possibilities and limitless opportunities. Let me ask you that in the context of where you see this business now growing. Uh, you've put together a triple shot strategy for Starbucks, which involves cost savings, but it also involves accelerating your expansion plans around the world. What are you prioritizing today? And as you look at this world, in your words, with limitless possibilities, what is the role that you see Starbucks? Play. So first of all, you know, as I said, this is a this is an iconic brand, and it's a brand that is founded on this idea of human connection. Um, it is a brand that is founded on this idea that even in a polarized world, you have the ability to create a third place, a place where people can come and feel belonging, feel joy, and essentially advance the conversation forward. Um, you know, with the ability to converse, to connect, and so that is at the heart of what this company is. So given that that company is there, uh, and given this is a business that's founded on kindness and joy, it's an iconic brand that needs to be celebrated. So we're not a political organization. You know, we're not a, um, you know, we don't fund governments, mm. or, um, you know, we strongly are opposed to hate speech. You know, we completely decry, you know, the weaponized speech that exists in many places. And there's all kinds of rumors of who we are and what we're about. Mm. But the fact is that, you know, we strongly uh, reject um, violence against the innocent. What we are about is we are about pro-belonging, pro-joy, pro-kindness. That's what this brand is about. So given that's what the brand is about, and we look at the world, you know, I worked in stores around the world. Mm. I could see society through the windows of our stores. And it's interesting when you go to the U.S. and you see, you know, a more polarized society. You come to Europe and you see a highly more multicultural customer base as well as partner base. I go to Japan and I see older customers coming in with their even older parents in mm. the afternoon mm. to share coffee. You go to China and you see this amazing ambition that the youth have. We as a brand play a real role, a role of providing that the world's third place. To that end, we said this triple shot and reinvention was about, first, it's about elevating the brand. Get the brand, take it even better. The second is about us strengthening and scaling digital. Mm. Now, we're a very digital business, and we have the potential to make it even bigger in what mm. we do, how we connect with our customers, but also how we reimagine the factory in the back mm. while delivering the theater in the front, the theater that you saw. <laughs> the third thing you, we have is truly global, and this is where India comes in too. Mm. You know, we have a big leg in the US. We've, of course, grown several stores in China, but the rest of the world has huge potential for us. Mm. Even in markets like Western Europe, we have headroom. You look at markets like India, we're just getting started. Yeah. So we will be truly global. Three out of four stores that we build over the next five years will be outside the US. Mm. Those three things are really important. And to that context, you know, we need to obviously fund this. So efficiency helps us do it. It helps us build the capabilities mm. that really reinforce this business. And the last thing, and perhaps the most important thing for me, is you know, we have 460,000 partners around the world. These are partners hired locally. Mm. They're hired by, you know, the local geographic partners that we have. Here we have an amazing joint venture with Tata's. These are people from the community mm. that we're working with. But how we ensure that we, through the power of storytelling, through the power of amplifying what's really important, we reinvigorate our partner culture worldwide. It's amazing, you know, we don't really have a system of transporting and transposing our culture. Mm. But you go to Mexico, or you go to Holland, or you go to, you know, Japan, or you come here to India, mm. it actually feels very similar. So that's what Triple Shot Reinvention is. And, you know, what it does is it gives us a comp growth of 5% in the long term, double-digit revenue growth, and earnings growth in the 15-plus percent range. All that put together helps us, you know, create a financial result. Well, in so doing, we meet the needs of all the stakeholders. We have partners, customers, mm. the farmers and coffee, the community, as well as the environment.
Well, since we are here in India, let's talk about your India plans and your joint venture with the Tatas. Uh, well, close to 400 stores in India. What do you see that number being over the next few years? Uh, give me a sense of the kind of expansion we should expect. Well, first of all, I'm really excited by India and what is happening here. You and I just discussed this earlier. You know, I've come to Pune and it looks so different. We see the investments being made in infrastructure. We see the consumer, um, you know, getting great strength. Uh, the country is poised for takeoff. Uh, and our business has been built very systematically over the course of the last 10 years with a base of partners who are extremely strong and a partner like the Tatas where the values are entirely consistent. Chandra and I have known each other for years and, you know, it's a very similar orientation mm. uh, to India, the potential of India and where we could go. Um, what we have announced is the fact that, you know, we're going to be opening, um, if you look at last year, we opened one store every five days. We're now moving to one store every three days. Mm. And we have a wonderful team leading the business, and I'm deeply supportive and appreciative of all that they do. And when they told me one store in three days, I said, that's amazing, well done. What are we now doing for the other two days? Mm. And I think what this tells you a little bit is the ambitions for India. So what are you going to be doing for the other two well, days? <laughs> the team is on it. <laughs> the team is working, obviously, on things to do. But, um, you know, what I appreciate very much is beverage and coffee score. And I love the coffee culture that we're building. Um, you know, food attach is a business that we have. And we've got a range of food products that attach to the beverages that we have that are terrific and that will be well done. We're working on things that are accessible, the Pico price point, the filter coffee that you drank. Mm. Um, and so all that's just for mm. India. But in addition to that, what may not be entirely visible to you is the work we're doing behind the scenes. You know, um, in Cork, uh, the Tatas and us have a joint venture. We work uh, very much on farming mm. and how we improve the quality of the coffee crop. Uh, we have a joint venture with Tata Coffee on roasting here in India. It's very important to build the back end mm. and to build the back end really, really well. And my hope and ambition is that we fundamentally scale up even further the coffee we source from India. Mm. So if you look at the new launch we're going to have this year, early this year here in India, it's going to be the Starbucks Reserved Monsoon Malabar. That's a, a tremendous blend. I drank it actually the other day. Yeah. This is going to be in all US stores in the middle of the year. Mm. So we're going to take India, what we make here, what we produce here, and also have it show up around the world. Mm. And it's a way of taking India to the world as well. So, so how much are you sourcing currently from India and how much do you expect that to be over the next five years? I think to me what you could expect is that as we continue to work together, Tatas and us, on coffee, the quality of coffee from the farming, we bring in the techniques that we have mastered by working with half a million farmers with whom we buy. You know, we provide information to another million and a half, there's two million mm. farmers of the 20 million worldwide who actually get information practices from us. We're bringing the whole set of practices as well here, including what we call cafe practices, which ensure the future of coffee for all in the mm. chain. And so we bring that in here. The idea very much is to say, how do you make India even bigger for us? And clearly India is a tea drinking uh, culture too. So uh, there's things we do with tea around the world. So I'm really hopeful that what we can do is fundamentally change the equation about how we take India to the world through Starbucks. So what is that going to mean in terms of incremental investments here in India, whether it is to beef up your store plans or it is to enhance procurement? What is it going to mean in terms of the kind of money that you are going to invest in India over the next few years? We have a very long-term view to investment and returns. And uh, what we know we're doing is we're creating a third leg of the stool uh, in our global markets. As far as India is particularly concerned, the team knows that, um, you know, the brand and how we deliver the brand is really very important. The values are super critical for us. And uh, with that, the team is essentially working on a plan, you know, continuing to build the plan we already have mm. to ensure that we get the kind of returns in the long term that we will get. But, you know, with opportunities, we will invest. And you can expect in India that we will invest. So where would you see India in the global pecking order when it comes to revenue contribution to Starbucks? I mean, the, the lion's share still is the US and China today. But what do you see over the next five to 10 years in terms of India's contribution? Well, China's 10 or less than 10% of, of the overall you know, revenues for us globally. The US is obviously a lion's size of it. But we actually have a lot of other markets. We're in 86 countries. You've got to recognize the potential of the headroom we have in all of them as we build out this uh, third leg of the stool. India's at about 400 stores, but we have 38,000 stores globally. Our plan is to get to 55,000 stores over the course of the next five years, with three out of the four stores being outside of the US. India will also have a big role in this. 